the Comedy Central series, The Other Two, follows the adult siblings of a teenage YouTube star as they navigate his newfound fame. Uh, Helena York plays one of those siblings, Brooke. Uh, first off, Helena, uh, as an actress, uh, you know, who's, you know, of course, worked in the industry. Uh, could you relate to a lot of this kind of show business story that kind of shows how the sausage gets made in certain ways? <laughs> I think the only thing I, I, I didn't have a full window in was like full pop fame is the only thing I, I didn't find the most familiarity with, although Drew certainly came from uh, a family where his two sisters had brushes with that. Um, but yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a constant kind of squishy reality of like trying to figure out who you are in the midst of, you know, what, uh, what the world thinks of you as. And I think that uh, certainly, yeah, there's a, like a lot to relate to for me there for sure. Yeah. yeah. What are the parts of uh, Brooke's experiences and, you know, her character that, that you find the most similar to yourself and your experiences and, and which ones are, would you say are the most different that are completely unfamiliar? Well, I've never slept in a boot closet. <laughs> you know, I've had to do some pretty seedy sublets that I, I remember there was a girl that had a dog and she had a pee pad for it. And the entire thing was entirely, the entire square inch of this pee pad was like covered in pee before she would finally change it. Um, so I think that generally the biggest thing that I relate to is kind of the New York slog. Um, being poor, trying to figure out, you know, how to make ends meet and and who you are and what you want to be doing. And, you know, I, I worked a lot of odd jobs before somebody would actually pay me to do this for a living. Um, you know, I and I and I, I really relate to that. You meet her and she's working as a, you know, broker at a high rise building squatting on empty apartments. And, you know, when I was in my 20s, I was working the front desk at Physique 57 and checking people into their exercise classes and, you know, eating bacon behind the front desk at six in the morning and having to apologize to women coming in for their 6 a.m. classes because they were smelling um, delicious fried pig. <laughs> <laughs> Pulse and squeeze as it were. Um, so I think that, you know, it's crazy. This is, it's, it's such a nuts thing to decide to do something that, you know, isn't linear to decide to be an actor. And I think that Brooke's life as a dancer was certainly not a linear path that she was going to be taking. And, um, you know, you find yourself in situations that you wouldn't necessarily expect. And that's sometimes great. And that's sometimes not so great. So, um, yeah. And you've done a, a, a worked as a theater actress, uh, been on Broadway a few times, uh, and and Brooke is being a dancer. Is that a, a one way that you felt uh, your paths were in a way kind of similar? Yeah, um, actually, what was really strange is that I Brooke breaks her ankle, and that's why she has to quit dancing. And I was doing a reading of a new musical. I was out of town in Atlanta, um, and I broke my ankle. And so it was sort of weird to be like, wait, did you guys know that this was an actual part of my real life Helena story? Um, and like I said, you know, you it's it's a nonlinear experience, this life and this career. And so it was sort of like, what do I do now? It was the you know night before we went into tech rehearsals. I was in a full cast and, you know, couldn't use my right leg, had to fly to L.A. and be driven around town by my mom. She had to like drive me to auditions because I couldn't hit a gas pedal. And I would walk into auditions and people would be like, what are you doing here? You're <laughs> triple. <laughs> we can't hire you. Um, so yeah, I think that, you know, she has this thing set up in her mind that she's going to be on this path. She's going to be a dancer and it sort of takes a veer to the right. And that's exactly what happened to me you know, when I was like 26, 27 years old and you kind of roll with the punches. And what I think is great about Brooke's story is that, you know, she maybe has an idea in her head of where she's going to go and it ends up kind of going in this completely other direction. And she finds a lot of empowerment in being in charge of something and, you know, becoming, you know, maybe a little manager for her brother. And it's sort of, um, you know, what's interesting is that what Carrie, I think during the season kind of completely loses his way and what his identity is where Brooke gets a, a, a lot more clear. So I loved that and it's fun to play and it was fun to play that with Drew as our characters sort of like went like that. <laughs> And the interesting thing about the nonlinear path of show business these days that the show depicts is how like 
up and down it can be in the age of social media, um, you know, yeah. where of course, uh, you know, Chase Dreams gets famous on YouTube in an in instance. And you have that episode where Brooks, yeah, everyone's like looking through Brooks, like online history to see what, you know, liabilities there are. <laughs> like, is, that something, is that something that you think about, you know, online or in, in this yeah. era of the business? I mean, I don't think I post a single thing without being paralyzed that I'm like, you know, offending somebody or like somebody's gonna be like, oh great, another picture of Helena and a dress that she wore to something. Like, shut up, who cares? <laughs> um, you know, yeah, I, I, I think what's wild and amazing about this age in social media is that you have the opportunity to kind of be whoever you want. And it's a creative outlet, I think, for a lot of people. I think, you know, there's certainly that mentality of like, you know, sitting on your, you know, being in the, you know, the old critters on our porch being like social media these days, what are these kids up to Lala? And it's, what's incredible about it is that it's like you had full offices of people, you know, strategizing ad campaigns and things. And now they're depending on, you know, Hootie Hootie who has uh, however many followers and takes really beautiful photographs. And, you know, they're getting paid to advertise for like massive companies and things. And I, you know, it's it's a wild medium because it's it's completely controlled by yourself and you know who you put out there is whatever you know. It, it sometimes it's shocking to me because I'll run into somebody and they'll be like, "Oh, it looks like you had a really good time at such and such garden or whatever," and you're like, "How does everybody know so much about my life?" And I'm like, "Oh, because I'm inviting them to." <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I think you know when I first met Case Walker, who plays Chase Dreams, actually did have pretty much overnight success as a result of this, his presence on Musical.ly, which is now TikTok. And the other two is his first audition that he ever went on. And then all of a sudden he's like a series regular on a television show, which is something, you know, I've always gunned my whole life for. And I, and I think it's, I, I think it's absolutely incredible <laughs> that these up, that these opportunities exist and here he is and he's fantastic and he's like perfect in every way. And, um, yeah, I guess I'm answering this question in a really roundabout way just to say that like I'm trying to be youth minded and, <laughs> and embrace exactly what it is because it's here. Do you know what I mean? I think we get asked a lot of questions about this and like our feelings about social media. And I just think like, well, it's not going anywhere. And frankly, kids like Case and Gen Z are perfecting it. And we're all going to be working for them for some day. So really, I'm just trying to learn as much as I can. I swear to God from him. I ask his advice all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what I love about the show, when I first started watching it, you go into kind of like a, a show that's a, a satire of show business, and it can be really, you know, sometimes really snarky or, or you know, really cynical, some you know, shows that deal with that subject. And this one is so warm, and especially the relationship between the siblings, uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Carrie and Brooke and... Chase, like Chase seems like a normal kid. He's not like this showbiz monster that we, you know, kind of get to meet. What's yeah. it like forming that family dynamic and, and having it be this actually, this warm and, and loving family? Well, I think what makes great TV and what makes great storytelling is um, doing something that people aren't gonna expect. I mean, it's been incredible that the response across the board, everybody's like, oh great, I, it's a, I thought that this was gonna be a story about these two like, completely embittered early 30s people that are mad at their famous brother and that's just not what it is which has been so awesome that that's been the thing that you know people are grabbing onto um you know i don't know i just it's i think it's the unexpected that is the most exciting to work on is the fact that like yeah it'd be so easy to slip into some snarky you know whatever but isn't there enough of that <laughs> do you know what i mean like there's enough to get pissed about now without having to, you know, go home and watch it on Comedy Central for 21 minutes. I, I you know, and I, it's, it, it also not for nothing makes for like an incredible work environment. And I think that, you know, to be able to find funny out of situations that are positive is harder to do. And I think Chris and Sarah in this show that they created just did a, an absolutely incredible job of that. And, you know, people got thrown stuff that they didn't think that they were going to get thrown and um, people felt very seen by it. And, um, it felt very real to them that people would be experiencing this in this way and, you know, love their siblings at the end. I mean, I have two brothers and, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what happens, those are the people that have your back. And I think not 
you know, not taking a giant dump on them is actually really nice. <laughs> And uh, uh, there's also this other uh, emotional aspect of the show. Uh, we find it out in, in really from the beginning that uh, 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 these siblings have have lost their father uh, at some points somewhat recently. Uh, you know, and and we learn more about that over the course of the season. How much did you know about the details of of that where that was going and you know, the the circumstances we find out were somewhat absurd, but also still, you know. Of course, obviously really sad and tragic for this family to go through. Uh, um, what was that like through the season? Uh, you know, it's, first of all, I'll just say that, like, Chris and Sarah could not have killed our dad in a better way. <laughs> <laughs> um, to have made something, to, to have made that moment uh, land so poignantly. And Molly gives such an incredible performance in that episode. It's episode nine of the season. Um, and she's so... Uh, she's so funny and it's, but it's so touching simultaneously. And to be able to find that balance is I think one of the things that makes her one of our great actresses, frankly. Um, we actually, you know, in the magic of television shot that episode first. So we knew about how our dad passed the entire time we were working on stuff beforehand um, because we shot in a, like a hollowed out plane on Long Island. Um, I just remember reading the script and we were all just crying, laughing, sitting around the table at Comedy Central. It just, again, it's, I, I said unexpected. And I think, you know, where you can have twists and turns in a show like, you know, I don't know, Breaking Bad that are things you're like, I didn't see that coming. Um, to have been able to do that in a comedy setting, I think is a testament again to Chris and Sarah, to what they, cr they created and how their brains work. Um, you know, and, and especially because for the entire last episode, I don't know if you noticed this, Ken is wearing a t-shirt that just says hashtag my dad froze. It's, you know, <laughs> brings it really nice and rounded, gorgeous, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and having that be your first uh, experience to shoot, it's, you know, obviously shooting in this plane, it's like, almost the entire episode is set on this plane and, and right. uh, uh, you know. We were all on top of each other. We all got to know each other very fast, getting spritzed with water bottles. And, you know, like what's so crazy about this whole experience for me is that, you know, you work your ass off your whole career. And then all of a sudden you're like in a plane carcass with Molly Shannon and Wanda Sykes being like, how did I get here? And I, I don't have an answer for it. It's, you know, and I, Sometimes I come to in the middle of these experiences and realize what's happening to me and I I can't believe it and I'm so incredibly grateful and you know to to have that happen in that context is uh, certainly again speaking of unexpected nothing I could have seen coming for sure. And there was, you know, another uh, unexpected relationship on the show when we first meet, uh, you know, sort of her her boyfriend, who's she's like sort of not attached to, but attached to, um, played by uh, Josh Zagara. And we find out again over the course of the season, he's not exactly what we think. He's he's uh, like really, you know, even she seems to discover over the course of the season that he's actually this sweetheart who might actually be good for her. And, and what was it like exploring that with with uh, Josh Zagara? Josh and I have known each other for like 12 years. We came up in theater together, just, you know, being clowns in Midtown after shows and, you know, drinking at Bourbon Street on 46th Street till two in the morning. Um, you know, I, I love him so much. And what I think was so smart of what they did, and they did this with most of the actors that they got was that character was supposed to be a guy that worked at Medieval Times. And he was this nerdy character. And they had Josh came in for like a couple other roles. And then they wrote Lance, for Josh, essentially. So you're literally just watching Josh Segarra, you know, say what's up and, <laughs> uh, which is what I think is is so great about that, about that character is that it's so specifically done towards a, a, the actual person himself. Um, you know, I think what I love about that is that I, you know, the, this is like tale as old as time is that you think, you know, you're something, you think you need to be on this path and really it's so, it's right in front of you you know, all along. So while she thinks, you know, there's, there's bigger, brighter things out there for her, she's above it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think ultimately realizes that the simple, the sim the simplicity of what's been right in front of the entire time is, is what's best. And, you know, I, what I like about that too, is that she's not constantly going back to some douchebag. It's, you know, what I love about the show is that it it's actually makes Drew and I look kind of you know, like we've been making some pretty bad calls <laughs> for people around us that have been um, 
Sorry for like, sorry, Gold Rip. There's nobody else has been fucking us this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it to ourselves. <laughs> Um, so to watch, to watch Brooke come to and to have like played with that was, um, was really fun. And I, and, and I think that's the other thing too, is that like all of the characters around the two of us are, are so great and so rich. And, and again, it's another thing that I think makes the show so, so awesome. I'm its biggest fan. <laughs> well, as your biggest fan, I'm sure you are as, as glad as everyone else that uh, it was renewed for a second season. Um, yeah. And what's interesting, the, sh the season ended, the first season ended on kind of a cliffhanger with uh, Chase kind of quitting stardom to go to college. He tweets at NYU and they let him in. Um, <laughs> and uh, But at the same time, their mother, Pat, is is embarking on like a talk show. Um, so like, do you think you will get, we're gonna see like, they're the other two and you know, but it's their mother there on the sidelines with, or we will Chase find his way back into stardom or what do you think and, and, and what do you hope? Yeah, I that was certainly the intent is that, you know, we remove, we remain the other two no matter how much we try to be central in our own lives. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I hope that you see chase you know go off and be doing something uh sensible but who knows how strong the pull of showbiz will end up being and um you know i it's i i think i we get asked what we hope for the characters to to do and what we want to see happen and the really boring answer is that you know i just really trust that chris and sarah will come up with something that i couldn't even say to you right now i just to have bosses like that, to have two people that are driving the ship so capably and so well, and and doing things that you know, to have a, your dad's dick freeze to a roof. Like, <laughs> so like, who am I to sit here and be like, oh, I hope Brooke, you know, I don't know, runs CAA in the future of whatever. I who knows. Um, but I think what's great is that I think the world will continue to expand, and the career of the family will continue to expand, and you know hopefully Brooke and Carrie, you know, just continue to grab onto the back of that speedboat and see where it takes them. Cause it's definitely going to be weird if nothing else. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I want to congratulate you on the show, um, and thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to talk with me today. Um, <laughs> and I want to thank everyone for, uh, for watching. Uh, please hit like and subscribe um, and check out more of our Emmy season interviews on this channel, fingers crossed at the Emmys for the other two. Yes. And make your predictions at goldderby.com where you can predict Helena and company for, for Emmys this season. Uh, thank you again and, and, and have a great day. Hey, Samuel, you too.